hello, it's Echo. Welcome to my very strange channel. I moved to this forest for the summer, so my life is changing a lot. Unfortunately, uh, the house that I'll be living in in the summers is still being built, so this is my insulation. It's purple foam. This is actually something I've been planning for a really long time, moving out into the middle of nowhere, and one of the things that my family gave me for Christmas last year was a stove, a wood-burning stove to be specific. Heat, the old-fashioned way, with fire, along with uh, working to help me restore it. The lighting in this is just gonna be a little ooky spooky and we're just gonna deal with it. The house that I'm moving into is very small. It's eight by 16 feet plus a loft for a bed. Anyway, the space I'm moving into is very small. And because of that, I needed a very small stove. So we went around the property and we looked at a bunch of the old wood burning stoves that they had, many of them buried in snow. Some of them looked really promising, but the one that I liked the most we found in the basement. It's a really tiny little wood burning stove and it was all in pieces and it was rusty. It needed a fair amount of work and there were a couple pieces missing, but I really, really loved how small it was. On top of being very small, it was also very vertical, which I liked because that's something that's gonna help save space. I also really liked that it had a little cooktop, even though the plate was missing and so we were gonna have to make one. I like the idea that if anything happened or if the power was disconnected for some reason, that I would still be able to heat the house and also cook. I also have candles and solar lights, so I don't have to worry about the lighting either. If you're hearing that noise in the background, it's a my quail. They're wrestling because I turned off their heater. I have 15 quail! I hatched them from itty bitty babies. And they're gonna start laying eggs in like a month. Making food the old fashioned way. Out of birds. So after I picked the stove that I wanted to use, we took it apart in as many places as would allow. I didn't even realize at the time that it had legs, and that is when I learned how to use a sandblaster. One of my uncles works on cars for a living, so he has a ton of equipment. He restores cars and paints cars, and he taught me how to use his sandblaster so that I could remove all of the rust and old paint from this beautiful cast iron stove. I've never done anything this industrial before, so this is really like a completely different art form for me. Just in case you're new here, this is kind of an art channel. I do a lot of artsy things. Most of it is drawing. But this is a form of art that I've never really gotten into. It's a bit more industrial and I really like it. I feel like there's a lot of possibilities. Learning to work with the sandblaster was a little scary at first because it's all under pressure. So there's this propane tank sized container that you fill with incredibly fine sand and then you connect a air pump to it and that forces the air into it, pressurizing it, and then that forces all of the air and sand out. I hope I'm explaining that well enough. It's not incredibly complicated, but it is a little scary because it's a lot of pressure. I once had a pressurized espresso machine explode on me and the steam was very hot. I could have burned myself so bad. I was very lucky that I did not get injured, but ever since then, Pressurized things terrify me. Just a bit. It kind of just violently burned into my brain that pressurized things are dangerous and can explode. So we took all the individual parts and then we laid them out over this like cardboard sheet and spray painted them with high temp black, which is a type of paint that is used for barbecue grills and things like this. It did take a couple days because I wanted to make sure that everything was dry before I flipped it and added second coats. There were two main parts of this stove that were missing. One of them was the ashtray, the little metal piece that holds up all the ashes that you can like scoop them out from. So if I tried to light a fire in this, all the ashes would just fall to the floor. So we had to cut out a new square and make a bunch of holes so that we could drill it in. That was pretty easy. The slightly more complicated piece to replace was actually the stove top. We kind of just wandered around my uncle's property and managed to find an old saw blade. My uncle taught me how to use a bunch of the, uh, what, like grinding tools and a, um, what's that one that you hold like this and then it cuts things and there's lots of sparks. Angle grinder, that's what it's called. I learned how to use an angle grinder and a bunch of like compressed air sanding tools. And I was so proud of myself because I cut it like perfect. Cutting square is easy. Cutting a circle is not. And I cut a pretty good circle out of metal. And then I sandblasted it, painted it black. The downside is that there was still the little hole in the center because it was a saw blade, but we ended up coming up with a really silly plug for it. My uncle welded a nickel to the back of an old bolt so that it would sit inside of this little hole so that nothing can fall into it. It looks kind of funny. It looks like I'm getting ready to cook a nickel. I really like it. It looks great. And then after that, we just put it all together and 
Now it's this nice little stove that is only gonna take up like a single corner space. I'm installing it like under the loft so the chimney's gonna go up and out, which means that the sleeping area is gonna be so toasty. That's kind of all I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to go over this really cool little project that I did last year. I'm really happy with it and I'm really excited to install it because there's like actual work and meaning behind it. It's a nice little stove. Have any of you done anything like this before. I probably will end up doing something like this again. Working with a sandblaster is actually a lot of fun. There's already things that I need to sandblast. Shelves that I've gotten from thrift stores and stuff. Just watching this tiny house go up, I have learned so much about construction and framing and tools that I did not know before. So I'm gonna give you 500 awesome points for making it all the way to the end of this very short video just talking about a fun project I did. Ooh, bugs the downside of living in nature. And I think for now, that's it. So I'm gonna go clean my quail cages because they desperately need it. Enclosure sounds nicer than cage. And hopefully I will see you around. Goodbye. Please like this video if you like it because I have no idea what to do with my channel anymore. My brain is in a million different places. My life has changed a lot because of COVID. Usually when I film videos, I will have like a soda or an energy drink. I have access to water and only water because my coffee maker is in another castle.